Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to strip down and service the carburetor on this Briggs & Stratton 450E series petrol lawnmower. This is a 125cc engine, as you can see here. And I've got this running okay. It's not running too bad, but it's just a bit of a mess. I've actually uh, replaced the sheared flywheel key that was on this. There's a link to that video in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now. But I've done that, and it runs okay. But when I've looked in here, it looks a real mess around this air filter box. Look at that. And what a mess that's in. And right around this carburetor looks a mess. So I'm going to strip this down. I'm going to show you how to service a carburetor on a Briggs & Stratton 450E series petrol lawnmower. If this is your first time at Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe and tick the bell notification icon. That way I can keep you up to date on all future videos. You won't miss a thing. And best of all, it's completely free. So we're going to start by doing what I always do on every repair. Just do this with every repair. Just unplug this spark plug leader for you and move it out of the way. And it's completely out of the way, tucked up out of the way, so nothing's going to happen. I'm going to lift this on this bench here. I'm going to start stripping this lawnmower down once I've put my hat on. Now what I like to do when I service these lawnmowers, just to give me maximum amount of room to work on them, is I always take these recoil covers off, just so I can get in. I'm just going to unbolt these three parts here, and remove this recoil cover. You can see how that slips off, that gives me access to absolutely everything I need to get to inside here. You can see from there, just as I've taken this cover off, you can actually see just how dirty it is in here. There's so much dead grass in here that wants clearing out. This is like an air inlet, there's a little white plastic part I'm going to show you in a minute. And if that gets blocked off, this car won't work and this lawnmower definitely won't run. So that certainly wants cleaning off and all this just wants a good service and a good clean up. So let's start by taking this air filter box off here. We'll just take that off and we'll just get rid of this. And that's, you know, that's really bad, isn't it? Just look at the mess of this in here. And all this potentially is going to end up in the carburetor and you're going to have massive problems with this lawnmower. And I quite like this design of this. Because you just take that cover off of those three bolts, and then if you want, this petrol tank here just lifts up here. You can just pull it up and remove it and take that out of the way as well. So I'm going to do that next. So if you just get it and just pull it up, it actually just pulls up. Eventually, if you wiggle it off, you can just get this up and out of the way. You can see that. I just pulled that off. I was struggling to just do it with one hand with my camera in my hand. You can see here, all these have got on as well as one governor spring here that goes to this governor arm, which is great. Really simple setup. They've got that. And this one linkage here that goes to the carb, it's really simple setup and it's a really great design is this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fuel line off here, I'm going to clamp that and I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to take this tank out of the way. So this is completely out of the way and I can get to absolutely everything really easily. So I'm just going to grab this fuel line here, it's got a little connector on here. Squeeze that, slide that along and see how that's moved out of the way. Now I can just pull this fuel line off here. I'm going to get a bolt, which I normally keep in this magnetic tray, which is here. When the fuel line comes off, I'm going to push this up, the end of it, and stop it leaking out, and that keeps everything nice and clean and tidy. I just like to clamp this fuel line like this, just get some mole grips and pull it off, put the bolt in the end, and then I can move this whole thing out of the way. So, that just stays there. This uh, air filter and this petrol tank are off. So all I've done is undo three bolts, take this recoil off, take this petrol tank off, and I can get to virtually everything. Look at the state of that there. I mean that's such a mess. And if this little hole, this was the white part I'm showing you, this is an air inlet. If this gets blocked off it won't run at all. So they're very lucky uh, the person I bought this on that this has lasted so long. The kill switch on the back here, this is filthy as well. This all wants a good clean off. So we'll do that as well. Let's just look at this cable at the back. The cable looks alright. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this air filter box. Just looking at this, I'm sure there's four bolts in here. I know there's two here, and they're slightly different lengths if I remember rightly, so let's just take some of this grass out of here. There's another one there, that's three. So there's three at the moment. That I can see. Or maybe it's just the three. And I'm sure they're slightly different lengths because they're bolt through into different parts. So when you take these out, keep them in the same order. We're going to have to clean all that off as well, so let's get something and take that off. I remember this from last time, I think there's two 7mm bolts here. A 7 and a 7, I think that one's an 8, so I'll just undo these two 7s here. Just back these off and out of the way. I'm going to keep these in exactly the same order. So I'm going to put that one there. I know that's the bottom one. I'll put that on the right hand side. I'm going to swap this over here and get an 8mm socket. Just keep that one out. Or was that an 8? Maybe it was an 8. 
no that wasn't it, that was a seven, so it's eight to take the recoil cover off, seven to take these two little bolts out, and then eight again, take the last one out, which is all a bit odd, so seven and eight so far, not too difficult, we'll keep them in the right order, you can see that one, it's a slightly different bolt that goes back through there with a the black thread on. Next I need to do is just remove this breather pipe from the back here, I'm just going to pull that off there like that, and I've remembered where the fourth one is, the fourth one is actually on this side here, and I think once again that's an eight. Yeah, we'll take that off. This whole thing should just fall off, which it's just done. So that's fine, we'll take that off and move that out of the way. And leave that bolt in there so that don't get lost. That's one less to remember. They have these three here. In fact, I'll put them back in. That one went on the right hand side. As I said, they're all slightly different, these. This one goes at the bottom. And this one goes there. So I'm just going to leave that and sit that down here. When I put that back together, without losing any of those parts. So now you can see exactly why I wanted to service this. And this, uh, the lady I bought it off had a load of grass and it was really, really long when I got there. And I did suspect that this might be in a bit of a mess, which it is. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this carburetor off here. If I remember correctly, I think this just pulls off. Yeah, that just eases off there. These are great, these. And it's just one linkage. You just twist and this whole thing comes off. You can see there a little bit of fuel just came out here to tip this up, but you can see here I've got this whole carburetor off. I can clean all that off. I'm going to blow that off with the compressor before I do anything else. Don't want to lose that washer there. I'll just set that one off. Put that somewhere. Don't lose these two at the back either. So once we've cleaned off all the dirt from the outside, what I need to do is just take these two bolts off the bottom of here and take this ball off. There's no diaphragm and gasket in these ones, which is great because there's less to go wrong. People don't like these plastic cars, but I quite like these. I'm just going to take that out there. Take that out there. We need to just get this main jet out of here so we can clean all this out and just blow it through. So that comes off like that. And then I'll just get a flat headed screwdriver, put it in that gap there and twist. And then this whole little thing without breaking anything off, it should just pop off like that, which it has. You've got a little bit of fuel there that you need to dispose of in the right way. And you can get to this whole float here, this retaining pin, we can get to this part that usually gets clocked up in here, which is like the main jet that runs through the whole carb. We'll just spray all that off and we'll clean it all, and blow it all through with this air compressor. So the next thing I need to do, is I'm going to remove this pin here. It doesn't actually slide through. These on this type of carb actually just pop off, which I don't really like. I think they should actually go through something, but they don't. They just pop off like that. And you'll see when you take that off there, just be real careful. Don't be in any rush to get it off. You can see the needle that's hanging down behind it. That's just there. You don't want to lose that part. Make sure you're doing this over a container or a tub or something like I am. Tip that over. Take that retaining pin out. And if you do it all over a tub like this, you can actually just keep everything together. Now, this little air inlet here, I just normally get some pliers here. Just pull that off there. Be really careful not to get it right at the end. Try and hold it on the thickest part when you pull that off. This wants to be really clean. You want to make sure there's a hole right through this part here. I'm going to clean it out with some carburetor spray. And this jet here, I'm just going to get some pliers on here and I'm just going to hold it and I'm just going to wriggle this out. And this only goes back in one way. You can't get this back in the wrong way so don't worry about that. And that's this whole carburetor taken apart and we can clean all these individual parts off. So I usually just start with the clean tub here and get the main body of this. And I just get some of this carb spray. This is just STP carb spray. Just spray in here. Just clean out all the holes you can get to clean in every way you can see. Just blast everything off. You might see some comments on YouTube about this. Oh, you shouldn't use carb clean and spray in. This it might damage the plastic. Well, this has petrol running through it all the time. And it never comes to any harm. So I've done this loads of times and it's never caused me a problem. You've got to get everything out and you've got to get any stale fuel out of this. And that's what this carb spray does. Anything you can see, just spray it up and get in every single hole and just leave it to soak in for a good five minutes. One little thing to note with these carbs is this little white plastic disc thing here, whatever it's called, this comes out easily. Sometimes it just drops out. You've got to notice here there's, a, there's actually a hole on the bottom of this here. And you've got to get that back in, in the right place because if you look down from the bottom, you see here, when it's white, there should be a hole there. This, this should actually line up. You must line that hole up there. So you've got to get this part in right so everything lines up in the correct place and you can put it back together otherwise you won't get any fuel going through this carb here. 
and you can probably just about see now I've lined that up there's actually a hole and you can actually see right through there right through the hole and right back into the main inside part of this carb rest. you must do that it's absolutely critical so just take some carb spray and clean all these parts in here I'm going to get in from the top as well just blow it all through here you see make sure all these holes are clean I'm going to blow up this with a compressor as well don't forget and even if you're not sure if it's a hole it leaves anywhere just spray it up and get some in there especially if the lawnmower has been sat a long time and you're trying to get it started again what you'll get is you'll get a load of stale fuel and it won't run properly and then what I do is I transfer all the parts to a uh, separate tub so I know they're all clean to say everything you can get to just blow it through and even the bowl get some in there as well and clean the whole thing off the cleaner you can get this the better of course what's really important is you have no blockages in any of these holes at all and I've got these uh, daft rubber gloves on because this carb spray really uh, isn't too good for your skin I suppose I don't really want it on my hands as, I, as I've said in previous videos I have a bit of vitiligo and it takes all the colour out of my skin so I hate wearing these if I'm honest with you but uh, needs must this one here is particularly important as well if you've got one of these lawnmowers by the way and you've done something like just wash it off with the hose pipe to get the grass off it and you find it won't start it's because this little part here this little inlet just sits here and if you wash it off from the top it runs down onto this inlet and somehow it gets inside and it's really tough to start this type of lawnmower if it's got wet so if, if you've done that and you're wondering why it won't start again and you've got it wet it's probably because this little part has got blocked up so I'll clean all that out I've got everything out now I've got everything off and cleaned and in a separate container I don't want to lose that retaining pin either so I'm going to clean this petrol out of this tub here and we're going to put this carburetor back together once I've cleaned the rest of this lawnmower off I'm going to put it back on so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend five minutes just off camera with this airline here I'm going to pick all these parts up and I'm going to blow through all these little bits here all these tiny little holes in here you see you can see through them and everything make sure there's nothing wrong with that at all I'm going to blow through all this and make sure everything's clean and clear so I'm going to do that now then I'll show you how to put this back together and we're going to clean this lawnmower off here get all this dirt off around here clean this kill switch off and we'll rebuild this lawnmower back up okay so let's rebuild this car so this is all cleaned off as good as I can get this so the first thing we need to do is put what I call the castle back together you see how this goes here this actually uh, I can remember that's right that actually sits there and it just pushes on and then these two pieces connect together like that with this gold piece at the front that's all clean and tidy this is the main jet part that goes through you want this to be immaculately clean so we'll do that first and we'll put that back on now the great thing about this is you can't you can't actually get this wrong it'll only go in one way it'll go in that way and push in and it won't go in that way see how far short it stops so just make sure you've got it in the right way and it'll click in listen how it's clicked in that's all you need to do I'm going to get this air inlet here and we're going to pop this back on that just pushes in there and once again that'll click which it's done there everything should sit in exactly as you want it to do now the next bit's a little bit more fiddly but it's not too bad take your needle here and sit it back in the float so it falls back on itself if you leave it tipping downwards or away from you it won't fall off drop the needle back in this carb here sometimes a little bit fiddly and get this pin here the pin actually does go through the float the white float but it doesn't go through the black plastic part so we'll put it through the float there we'll knock that down clip that in I really don't like that design I have to say so I always think it's going to come off and you need to check now that this actual needle here you need to check you can just see in that gap there that the needle is actually going up and down because if it's sticking at all this will just keep filling up with fuel and you'll have a massive leak when you put this back together so that just needs to be like that sat exactly as it is there's nothing else you need to do there apart from refit this bowl so let's do that let's just get this bowl here and just pushes back on and once again it just sandwiches together like that really easy to do I'll put these bolts back in you can see just how simple it's it's been to do this it's only taken me kind of five minutes to do so if you've got a lawnmower that's not running correctly take the time to do this and make a real good job of this clean it all through and put it back together so you can see here what I'm talking about there see this little white part if you just look at the top of there you can just see the main jet just coming through there that wouldn't get through there 
if this actual circular part wasn't sat back there correctly. So I've tightened the uh, ball back on here and that's the servicing of this cab complete. I'm sure you can see it's in a, a far better condition than it was when we took it off. So the next thing I want to do before I put it all back on is I'm just going to spend five minutes cleaning up all this horrible, horrible mess in here. And I must remember as well not to forget to put this back, back on this gasket here. If you leave that off, I could be in trouble. So I'm going to clean this up and I get the air compressor again and clean all this off and make sure it's clean and tidy before we put this back together. So I've just given this a bit of a clean up before we put it all back together, it just makes sense to do that while it's off. So it's really easy to work on these, it's great because it's so simple, it's just one linkage as I said before, so obviously this is going to be easy now, there's no fuel in this cab. Just put this through here, stick it through and twist it, and then you might wonder how this goes on. You actually just need to slide it on, it just pushes on from underneath like that, and then you just pop this back on, just push it on this inlet manifold here. And that's it, it just sits like that. You might try and get it on and bump it into these two brackets here. You don't need to do that. One thing to test as well, make sure everything moves. You can see this spring linkage here, this governor arm, when I move this at the front, everything moves there. And that's exactly what you should be doing and looking at before you go any further with this. But that's it, basically that's it. And that's the whole thing clean and tidy. No dirt's gonna get in here and cause you any running problems for the foreseeable future once you've cleaned the air filter off anyway. I've just given this air filter box a clean up, make sure it's all clean and tidy. The primer actually works. You can see here there's actually like a little a gauze, like a little filter. This is uh, this needs to be completely clean because that's where it primes from. If you put your finger over it, press the primer ball from the other side, you can actually feel it pushing your finger off, can you hear that? You need to make sure that's clean, or it won't prime your engine properly. So that's all cleaned off. I'm just gonna pop this back on here. Put this breather pipe back on first. Just push that on before I forget. And it always just sits there nice and easily as well before you even put anything back on. And I've kept these screws in the, the right order. So I'm gonna pop these back on. So, so if I start with this one here, the sevens one at the bottom. Pop that one in there. I'm not going to tighten these right up just yet. And the other sevens are this side. I'm going to get it all lined up nice and neat first. That's the two sevens in. And these are the two, if I remember rightly, the two eights. That one goes in there. This is why it's important to keep them in the right place. Because they don't fit. Otherwise, and you'll be wondering why it won't go back together. So, I can tighten these ones up. I'm taking those two up, and that's that, two eights there, and then we'll just tighten up these two 7mm ones as well, which are there, and there, and that's one advantage of having an impact driver with uh, adjustable torque as well, that's back on, it took me no time at all, and that's a nice neat job, and this lawnmower's going to run a lot better for it as well. Whatever you do, don't go to the trouble of servicing a carburetor and putting an air filter on or an air filter box that looks like that. So I'm going to clean these two parts up and we'll put that back on as well. So as if by magic that's cleaned up, I just got some old fuel, dipped it in it and then cleaned all the oil off it and then I blew it off with the air compressor. That's uh, that's certainly good enough to put back on. There's the air filter box, we'll put them things back together there. We'll just pop that on there, hook it in from the bottom. Let's get this the right way around. I'll we'll flip that on like that. So I hope you can see just in sort of 10-15 minutes what a difference we've made to this lawnmower. You can see just in here what the difference is and how it looked before. Make sure this breather pipe's on right. Now everything still moves about exactly as it should. What we need to do next is just the opposite thing again. We need to put this petrol tank on again. The opposite what we did to take it off is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to clean that up as well. And I'm going to put this petrol tank back on, drop it from the top, refit the recoil and then we will try this lawnmower and make sure it runs. So let's um, get this petrol tank back on here. This is always a bit of fun. Not too bad on these mows really. Just drop it back on here. Just goes back on, just slides back on from the top. That's all you need to do. There's no sort of trickery around it. It just pushes back on and that's it. So what I must do of course first before I forget is reconnect this fuel line. So that is how you push it on. But just reclamp this fuel line here. Undo this, you see how we keep it from having any fuel coming out. I'm going to reconnect this fuel line first before I put the petrol tank on. Push that back along now, like that. Make sure it goes all the way along, and then I can just get in from the top here, and then I can just push this petrol tank back on here, like that. 
and that's all in place and I'm just going to get some pliers under here and slide this clip back along to make sure it's tightened up properly nothing's going to come off that's the petrol tank back on I'm going to put this starter recoil back on as well I'll just drop that on like that. so we've got the whole thing back together again now it's a lot tidier than it was before so I'm just going to lift this lawnmower down off this table and we'll just start this up and make sure everything runs as it should and I must remind myself when I get this off this table to actually reconnect this spark plug lead as well let's fire this mower up, let's hope it starts and let's hope it uh, runs evenly it might just take a little bit of settling down there might be a little bit of smoke from where I've had it tipped up a little bit but let's just prime it and pull it over and see how it starts up starts and runs great first pull in fact which is great very nice and evenly running there's no revving up and down or anything like that there's no leaks so I'm happy that that job's done properly so that should get you through if you're looking to service a carburetor on this 450e Briggs and Stratton petrol lawnmower it's also the same process on a 500e as well because I've actually got one of those lawnmowers myself it's identical to do so it's not difficult at all to do and I've just shown you exactly how to do it so hopefully I've helped you out so if that has helped you out and if helps you get your lawnmower running again or taught you how to service the cab do me a massive favor take a quick look at my website which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com on there you'll find about 40 articles all about Briggs and Stratton Honda and every lawnmower that I repair for profit telling you how to service and repair everything as well in the top right hand corner of your screen now there's a playlist to all my other Briggs and Stratton videos that are on YouTube I think there's about 50 there if I remember rightly so you could take a look at those if you want thanks very much for watching Click like, leave a comment or whatever you like to do on YouTube these days. But I do really appreciate you watching. I hope to see you next time and subscribe if you wish. Thanks very much. See you next time.